today my little topic says asking God is obedience to God. At the night vigil, I spoke on this same topic that when you ask God for a thing, that you are being obedient to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. James 4, 2 to 3. James 4, 2 to 3. It says, You lost and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. The reason you don't have a reason to say thank you is because you have not asked God for what you want God to do for you. If I see you every morning and you greet me, like some people, they'll just call you from Nigeria or wherever, and they begin to just say, God bless, good morning, how are you? They've not told you what. And some people that know me know I get impatient. I get impatient with people that just say, they just send you a WhatsApp, good afternoon. Then it's not a conversation. Just say, good afternoon. You, you are waiting. They expect you to now say, good afternoon too. Then they say, how are you? They say, I am fine. Then they will, be, they will, they will forget the WhatsApp for 10 minutes. Then say, God bless you, sir. Amen. Okay. Why don't you just WhatsApp me and say, good afternoon, sir. God bless you. Good day. Good evening. Good, um, happy new year. Happy new month. Happy new day. Happy morning. Then just say what you want. Please, I need $10. Then I will forget all the other story and I will tell you, what's your account number? Here's your money. Or I will say, sorry, I don't have. Good morning. Are you greeting me good morning in the morning? It's already, just go to what you want. Good morning, this is what I want. Amen? This word in James 4, 2 says, you lost and you do not have. Some people follow you on Facebook as if you are their God. They know when you buy new dress because you have nothing to do with your life. You are updating them every minute. Every morning you wake up. Am I lying? Because if you see certain photographs, you wonder who took it. Who took it? Instagram. Every day we are so, so, some other people are watching you, lusting after what you don't have that you are portraying that you have. Some are even cursing you every day. Say, God will punish you for that dress. Because they are so angry. Maybe there's your sister or cousin that you say there's no money. You go to parking lots and you stand by somebody's Mercedes. And they are cursing you over something that does not even belong to you. You do housewarming because you got mortgage. What is there to warm in a house that you owe somebody money for? <laughs> Gio was shocked one day. He told us the story that one of his sons bought a mansion. And he called him when he came to America. He said, Daddy, I want you to come and bless my house. I said, Glory be to God. So they went to the house. They blessed the house. A few years later, I said, the son called him. He said, Yes. He said, Daddy, they want to take my house. Ah. He said, who is the enemy on assignment? My son, they can never take you. I said, ah, no, sir, it's not that kind of, it's mortgage. <laughs> and you called me to come and warm it and pray for you. I thought it's your house. Then he messed with us in America. I said, if a man in Nigeria says, this is my house, ah, it's his house, for sure. You call them poor. If a man said, this is my car, ah, yeah, it's his car. It's not that it is higher purchase or, or whatever we call Or lease. After 72,000 miles, the car that used to be yours is no longer yours. The God that we are talking about 
is able to give what he has because he owns everything. So you don't have to lust after what somebody else has when you have direct access to the one that owns it. The earth belongs to God. And everything in the earth belongs to God. The earth and the fullness thereof belongs to God. The earth and the fullness thereof belongs to the almighty and is telling you today that you lost and you do not have he even went on to say some people murder and covet and yet they cannot obtain when you see all these armed robbers and all these people that have been arrested after they stole whatever they stole they did not obtain it because they are now in jail he says you fight and war Yes, you do not have because you do not ask. What you take by fraud or by force does not belong to you. And the simple way to get what you want from God is simply to ask him. Amen? Many of us still do not ask God. If you talk to people, they are complaining about what they want. And instead of kneeling before the throne of grace and saying, Father, I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. Kneel down. Talk to him. And say, Lord, this is my situation. This is what I want. This is what I'm asking you to do for me. And I know that with God nothing shall be impossible. It says, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. So even when people are asking, they don't even ask according to God's word. You have to ask according to the word of God. You have to ask in understanding. And God will answer you in the mighty name of Jesus. It says, and some of us are asking because we want to spend it on our pleasures. The reason some of us don't receive our blessing is because we want to show them. Who is them? You are not asking for God's blessing to be a blessing. God has given you one room. I use Pastor Kunle Ajayi again as an example. To the glory of God. He's not here, so he doesn't know. I knew Pastor Kunle Ajayi maybe 25 years ago. He was living in one room in Moshe. Pastor Kunle Ajayi, you know him if you are a redeemed member. He's the one that ushers in the general overseer. When Kunle was living in one room, he had maybe seven people that didn't pay rent living in his room from time to time. They were revolving in his room. With the little he had, he gave all that he had. I remember I used to sleep in a butemeta sometimes, sleep in the altar, sweep the church. We used to consider him not to be very, how will you be so he will be he will walk himself out for God. Fast forward 20 years or so later. He wasn't boasting to the glory of God. Number one, he drove into where I was when he came to see me with a Range Rover. To the glory of God, Kunle today, probably Pastor Kunle, Pastor Ajayi, to the glory of God, has maybe three, four houses. Not to boast. He had about three, four houses. Somebody gave him a house one day. They were so blessed by his ministry, they just gave him a house. When he was serving God, it wasn't to get a house. The little that God 
and trust God tested him to say, okay, let me take you from homelessness to one room. And he saw how he handled one room. Then God took him. I know when he moved from that one room to Ilupeju. I know. When his wife used to make dummy lolly, ice pop, in, for their first son. In fact, the first son now is married to Ajayi's sister. They called the lolly dummy lolly. She used to make it in her kitchen and sell it. But faithful. Kunle will carry his boss. Car he will be carrying instrument. Car just running ragged. They will call him to come and minister. They won't give him one naira. They will call him to go and minister. They won't give He won't eat. Every day fasting. Every day just strong. But he was just doing it. And he was asking God, God bless me. God, you will do it. And God did it. Those days are as if it never happened again. I told you one day I saw him. He was so stressed out. I said, what's stressing you? He said, my passport is full. I said, full of what? And he wasn't boasting. We were just talking. He just opened his passport. There's no stamp. That, there's no space to stamp his passport again. Living in one room. If you believe God, <laughs> your sorrow will turn to joy. You don't have to lost after anybody. Kule could have been lost. Gio came here about 15 years ago or so in New Jersey. And he was ministering. He preached about Pastor Kule Ajayi. He said one of his sons, somebody offered him like $100,000. And that was when the, the guy was not comfortable. $100,000 or so to move to his ministry and begin to teach the choir and lead the choir. He said Pastor Kule declined. He said, years after, that person, that bishop now told him, he said, ah, this is your boy. Do you know I offered him so, so, so years ago? So he went to Pastor Kuhn and said, why did you not tell me? That's honor. That's, that's faithfulness. He said, because I know he's your friend. And since I've declined, of what use is it? The millions. It, it's impossible. If Kunle has a need today, it's met. If it's a fact, it's, it doesn't have to. If he need, people, he was telling me one day again. I, I don't know. I didn't even plan this. You, you do know he blows the saxophone. Somebody called him one day and told him the most expensive saxophone that they built, custom built. They built one and they wanted Pastor Ajayi to come and try it out in England. Listen to this story from one room. The person bought him a ticket and said. Pastor Ajayi, I need, Ajayi said, he can't go because Gio is going to do something on Friday and it was, I think, Wednesday. The guy said, please, I will buy the ticket. You will fly to England, test out the saxophone so that they can fit you and do everything and then you can come back. So he flew to England. They called the shop not to close. He ran into the shop. He's the one that told me. And we, he tested it out, and he said they can do this, they, can, they, they did everything. And then he ran back to the airport, got on a plane, and flew back to Lagos. He, he did, that's the problem he has. It's a big problem. <laughs> it was a problem. It's like some comedian said, somebody wanted to charge his phone. Nepa took like he just entered plane, went to London, plugged the phone. After six hours, they charged it back, and he quickly came back to Nigeria. And people said, where did you go? He said, I went to charge my phone. <laughs> He said, that's a joke. It's not that I know somebody that did it. Before you know, redeemed pastor says, Pastor Ajayi charged phone in London. To go. <laughs> that's not Pastor Ajayi. What I'm trying to say to you is that no matter how down you are, God has a plan to take you to the next level. And he's asking you today, just ask me. Don't envy your neighbor. Don't be looking at somebody's Instagram and having high blood pressure. Half of the gold they are wearing is not even real gold anyway. And some of the bags they are carrying is borrowed. Some of them, they are friends, they just circulate the bag. Then some of these bags, they say they are selling some bags. $10,000. Hey! $10,000 for a bag? But they are selling the same bag, $100 in some places. So the people that know what they are doing, they will buy the $100 one. They can buy 20 of it and be taking photographs daily with the bag. And you want to die. 
Don't kill yourself. Don't run another person's race. What you need God to do for you, ask God. Just on my way here, I was listening to Pastor Pojo Yemade's they do the platform. And the vice president of Nigeria was going to speak. And just before the vice president spoke, they said they've been talking for about seven hours. The people have been tired. But there's a young man. They have a leadership program. And that leadership program, they mentor young people, teach people, which is what I really want us to do in the church. A leadership academy. And then Oh, Pastor Yema, the vice president was seated. He came and said, well, there's somebody that won. Out of 500 people, he won the opportunity to be able to speak to the world. I said, so I'm going to give him three minutes. That's what we call elevator pitch. Three minutes. This young boy, he didn't go to school in London, Harvard, Yale, no. He went to school in Lagos State University. He ran up the stairs. He says, I'm a survivor. I just heard it for two minutes. And he spoke for like two and a half minutes. And he told about how his father died when he was six years old. His mother had three children. And that how he survived. That most of the time they did not have electricity in their house. Because the mother prioritized and said, apart from God, education is the only important thing in your life. Electricity is not important. So their, their light was always cut. The mother struggled. The mothers, everything in their life was survival. They couldn't pay for school fees, survival. But in the end, the boy graduated. One of his brothers is a medical doctor. The third one, he said three of them are university graduates he won that program that allowed him to be able to speak where the vice president was seated he spoke to the nation they gave him three minutes he did not start by saying I don't have a lot of time and because my time is running short and because my time when you finish talking about all your time just like the people that whatsapp me and say good morning and keep quiet don't whatsapp me again say good morning and say what you want to say so that I don't have stress amen the boy, in two and a half minutes, he delivered his message. When his father died, when they were suffering, when they were weeping, the mother said there are only two important things. God and education. Focus on God. Knelt down and said, God, these three children that you have given me, you must help me with them. These three children that you have given me, you must do something concerning them. These three children that you have given me, it shall be well with them. These three children that you have given me, they will not die. These three children that you have given me, they will succeed. These three children that you have given me, they will be for signs and wonder. Hallelujah. God is telling you, ask. Ask. How is it so difficult? When my son comes to me and says, Daddy, can I have McDonald's? He has a 50-50 chance. Is either I say yes or I say no. But if he doesn't ask me, he has a 100% chance of not getting what he wants. One day they told me that his, um, Adebayo is afraid to ask you. I said he should continue in his fear. <laughs> he should continue in his fear and he will hold his peace. If you don't ask, God is saying you will not receive. You have not because you ask not. Luke 7, 7 to 12, which was our Bible reading. We all know it by heart. Ask and what will happen? Seek and what will happen? Knock and what will happen? For as many of us asked, what did they do? As many as I sought for something, what did they do? And as many as knocked, the door was open. If you refuse to ask, you will not receive. And so this is the dilemma we have when it comes to thanksgiving. I hear testimony. Somebody came here one day and said, cry and cry. I almost, I was going to fail my exam. I knew I was going to fail. I said, God, this, just help me this one time that I will pass. And they passed. They read, but on the day of the exam, they were just not able to think that they could pass. You can't just come and not read and then say, God, please help me to pass. You will fail. Because that is asking a miss. When I took my bar exam in 1992, 1992, in Lagos, I don't know, maybe it's nerves, maybe it's demon, I don't know. Because it was terrible. 
my cousin who came here, Dr. Williams, the first day of the exam, I was throwing up throughout the exam. And if you have ever been to Nigerian law school, they have ambulance. They will have like three ambulances for people that are going to faint. Because when you enter the exam, or you will, some people will faint. And so I was throwing up. And I put my head on the thing, and I was just struggling. And then I just asked God. Because the week before, I used to go to a butemeta. Then, redeem, we have access. So the general overseer was our pastor. And my aunt just took me. I was just going. She said, ah, Remy, let's go. And we went up the stairs. There's a little building. There was a little bit. Of, and Gio's office was there. We went and said, ah, daddy, your son is going to take by exam. Daddy just said, nail down. 92. And I nailed down. And he put his hand on my head and prayed for me that every demon on assignment, every, and that I will pass, I will excel. I said, amen. And I left. When I started shivering and I was on the way to that ambulance in my exam hall, I said, God, and Gio prayed for me. It's not supposed to be like this. Oh. Please help me. Let me just finish today's paper and I will give you glory. I managed, I finished. So when I got home, of course, as a sensible guy, I got my cousin, he gave me Fenigan or so injection to stop throwing up when I get to the, so the next day, he pumped me with the Fenigan, I went. When I got to the exam all this time, I was going on, I was good, day two, because law school is day two. Here, yeah, it's two days. So I was doing my paper, and then I started feeling sick again. I said, God, help me. Help me. And I was just feeling sick. So I got up, and I told them I'm not well. I left my paper. I wanted to faint. They said, okay, take. I said, but if I can take some sugar, like Fanta or something. So I got Fanta. They bought me the book. I went back to my seat. And then at a point, I just gave up. I gave up. So I got up. I took all my paper and my Fanta because I've been going out to throw up, come back in. So when I got to the invigilator, thank God that God sends everybody, can send anybody to you. That woman was a Christian. I, she didn't tell me, but she must have been. Ah, she said, my son. She, what's her business? I'm not her son. She said, my son, you have almost finished. Eh? Try, try. I said, I can't try anymore. She said, don't you believe in God? Ah, I said, I believe. Pray. Ask him for just little strength. You never know. If you give in this paper, you will fail. In the middle of the exam. But if you try, who knows? God will do it for you. I said, okay, I'll take another Fanta. I took the other Fanta. I went, I threw up. I managed back to my seat and I put my head on the thing and I started writing. Then when I finished the exam, I just went and submitted. So the exam, I didn't write story. If they just said, this happened, this happened, yes, he's guilty. The reason he's guilty is this and these are the laws. Bam, 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 bam. In law, you call it IRAC. Issue rule, you have to put the issue. The issue is, is guilty. Uh, he may, may, the rule is that according to section so, 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 then the analysis. So we, I was, my brain just went to where it was supposed to go. To the glory of God. When I got to my auntie said, how was the exam? I said, I failed. <laughs> she said, we don't fail in our family, one. Number two, you are a child of God. What nonsense. Come on, say I passed. I said, say, okay, I passed. <laughs> she said, you have to believe God. When the result came out, and in Africa, in Nigeria, they publish it in the newspaper so that you can't go and lie that your child passed. They published it. I couldn't find my name. The day it came out, I rushed. I, everybody was, but so I just went to the pass. Ordinary, there's first class, there's second class or pass, second class lower, third class, pass, and fail. They don't put your name if you fail. So I first started from pass. I didn't see my name. So I was sweating. I went to the other one. I didn't see my name. So I said, well, let me just check all my friends that passed, and next year we do it. When I saw my name, I didn't even know the spelling of my name again. I spelled it again to be sure it's my name. Then I saw Oshikonlu, comma. Then they put Olure Milekun. I said, ah, my government name. That's the, that. The people behind me said, come on now. I said, I don't then they put stop. Then Mr. Adidiji's name is my name as well. Then I saw Adidiji. I said, ha, God is good. Quietly, I didn't jump. I just walked back into my car. I drove back to my little room. I didn't go inside to tell people I passed. I knelt down and said, ah, so God, you can do it. Because I didn't pass. Oh. 
<laughs> I didn't pass. It's the hand of God that concluded the matter for me. Why don't you just ask? That day, if God did not send help to me through that woman, I'd given up. I had already prepared my mind for me. What you think is impossible for you, God has put it in you to be possible. You are the only one that can limit the hand of God upon your life. No matter how bad it is. The woman that I told you about, the boy that was talking in Oye, Oye, um, Pastor Pochi, Pochi, Oye Made's church, the father died and left three children. Somebody else, the father died and left one. And that one became a vagabond because the mother has already given up that I cannot do it without my husband. I cannot do it. Where will we get money? I have to go and marry a big man to be, and then in spite of all the marrying this person, I have to go and do prostitution. Some people say, because I had no money, that's why I went to do prostitution. The woman struggled, cut off the fat. When I was younger, my father died and left five children to the glory of God. When all our friends, our family members, relatives were traveling to London like British Airways, we were just sitting at home. No London. We will be playing outside in the London. Okay, for what? You have nothing. No, there's no London to go to. Your London is outside your house. And you will just be doing London outside. Playing soccer. Do you think I feel good when all your friends travel? They, then they come back from, you know, little children are bad. They used to sell one pencil case. You know those pencil cases from London that would be big like pencil they will show off. They will have backpack. Now we'll be donating backpack to Africa by the grace of God. Backpack. But you would have thought it's over. I remember. Don't, I'm old now because you will now know from what I want to say. The day, the year they brought color television to Nigeria because it was black and white before. So one year they just said color television will start. Our own color television did not start in my house. Our TV remained black and white. So I asked my mom, I said, why? She said, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. You can't afford it. You can't afford air condition. Forget it. Air condition for where? Now I can't sleep without air condition if I go to Africa. Thank God for that. Is it not the same me that was sleeping without air condition for like 20 years? Even when I went to university, air condition. Who had air condition in the university? What I'm saying to you is that the way Things are today and it's not the way it will be forever. But you must trust in God and ask him. It's not guesswork. He's the one that said, ask and you will receive. He's the one that said, seek, seek and you will find. He said, knock on the door. If you go to my house and you don't knock and you stand outside, if I don't have camera, you will stand there until you die. How will I know you are there? Can you imagine this door-to-door -door salespeople? In fact, the other day I was at home. I wanted to have a nice afternoon siesta that I've not been having in a long time. As I was just about to get there, the bell just rang. I said, who is looking for somebody in my house? So I went. The guy wanted to sell me something about. I didn't even hear what he said, but I have to be polite. I said, God bless you, but I don't want to buy it. He said, he said maybe you won't buy it, but you can try it. I said, I don't want to try it. He said, but let me just demonstrate it. I said, I don't want to demonstrate it. I said, just leave me. I want. To. If he didn't press the bell, will I know he's there? He may press twenty bells and make no sale. Bell number twenty-one. It may sell five. If you don't press the bell, nobody will know you are there. If you don't knock on the door, it will not open. If you don't board the flight, you will not arrive at your destination except you are a witch. That means you fly by unconventional flight. But if you want to fly like people like us, we have to go and board regular airline. <laughs> Amen. Amen. John 16, 24. 
I'm going to close shortly. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. John 16, 24. Take these scriptures to heart. It says, until now, you have been complaining. Until now, you've been comparing. Until now, you've been grumbling. He said, but why don't you ask in my name? So when you hear us saying, in Jesus' mighty name, we are asking in the name of Jesus. Psalm 107 verse 6. Psalm 107 verse 6 says, they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them out of their distress. God will deliver you out of your distress in the mighty name of Jesus. I stumbled on a video on the National Prayer Day. Forget your biases. It was the President of the United States of America speaking. But you know the amazing thing is not him that I was talking about. But he called some two people out on National Prayer Day. One of them was a convicted armed robber in the United States of America. A black man. He didn't know his father. He went through all the normal thing. And then he was convicted of armed robbery. When he was convicted of armed robbery, he was put into solitary confinement. I guess maybe he was not a, being a good prisoner. Or they just wanted to deal with him. And so when they locked him up, he said while he was in solitary confinement, he started listening to different messages. That's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing. Many of us, our faith cannot develop because we don't listen to the word of God. And then he says, hearing the word of God. He was in prison. He could be planning how to break out of jail. But instead of planning, do you know that 99% of those that break out of jail, they catch them or they kill them. So if you even read, you will know that it's not even wise to break out of jail because it's either they, when the person is in jail, at least they are feeding you there. But when you run away, you are just going to suffer, 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 and they will either kill you or they catch you anyway. So this man, I'm robber, he was reading the word of God then. I don't know whether they have radio, but then he started listening to the word of God. Then one day he was listening to Billy Graham and Billy Graham was preaching the message of salvation. And this man there in his cell, he gave his life to Christ. And then when he gave his life to Christ, he started doing more, reading more. He got out of solitary confinement. He started doing a fellowship in prison. While he was doing his prison fellowship as a prisoner, this was just National Prayer Day was last week. They called him out. It's not a figment of my imagination. So this gentleman he now became the pastor in the prison. Then eventually they released him. When they released him, he was in his house. The FBI agent that arrested him in the first place came to his house, knocked on his door, and told him, the reason God sent me to the FBI was because of you. And God ordained me to come and reach out to you. And in the end, they became best friends. They started a fellowship for ex-prisoners and for the prison people. And they started leading prisoners to Christ. All the man did was that he knelt down one day, just like God has been speaking to many of us. But we don't refuse to ask. He says, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And they asked God, please, forgive me my sins. Have mercy. We are too proud. We are too sophisticated. We are too intelligent. This is America. We are too comfortable. Too many of us have everything we need. And that is why we don't understand that even those things can be taken away like this. This man asked God. He came out of jail. He became somebody that stood on the White House lawn for people to share the story of the goodness of God in his life. From prison, God took him to glory. Whatever prison you are in, God will set you free in Jesus' name. Isaiah 65, 24. Isaiah 65, 24, it says, It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. 
And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Matthew 21, 22. Matthew 21, 22 says, Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. When that man was in that prison cell, solitary confinement, ex other prisoners, or even the wardens would have told him, Joe, <laughs> keep on praying, but I've got the key to your jail cell. You're not going out. Nothing is going to come out of this. You are useless. You are no good. Who's going to give an ex-convict a chance? Who is going to give a black man a chance? Oh, you, you lost your dad. You don't even know who your father is. Oh, you are too short. You are too tall. Oh, you don't. And still, God used him for his glory. I was listening to Bishop T.D. Jakes one day. He said he had a problem. And his problem was that he stuttered. T.G. Jakes, even when he speaks now, there's a little lisp. He used to have a bad stuttering problem. People used to laugh at him that you, you want to be what? You don't even know what you want to do. You want to be a preacher. People, you can't speak. He asked God, God, help me. They said, number two, you are a country bumpkin. Do you think the people in the city, with your accent and with your drawl and everything, you can make it? He said, thank you. Today, he celebrated. Steve Harvey, I was listening to him one day too. He was crying. Every time he gets emotional about it, he had a stuttering problem. He said he went to his school. Some of you have heard his story. And they said, today, everybody should write what they want to become. So somebody said, I want to be a doctor. They said, clap for him. I want to be a lawyer. Clap for him. They said, Steve. Then the teacher said, what? Are you trying to mess with me? They said, what did Steve write? He said, I want to be on TV. The guy said, I will deal with you, this teacher, and I will make sure that you don't come back to this school being a smart aleck. Now, go home, go and tell your dad what you did and your mom, and I'm going to discipline you. Steve Harvey went home, and then the mother said, you are being smart in school, you are messing with the school. Blah, 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 blah. The mother wanted to beat him. The mother said, don't worry, when your dad comes, I will deal with you. He will deal with you. The dad came and said, what happened? He said, he showed him. The dad said, okay, why are you trying to be a smart aleck? Why are you, how, who have you seen? Dad, Steve now said, but that's what I want to do. So the dad said, oh, it's not that you are trying to be smart. That's what you want, you want to be on TV. The father said, go into your room. He said, that night, his father came into his room and said, bring that piece of paper. And he was crying. He had it in his hand. He said, I want to be on TV. I asked God, that's what I want to be. He said, okay. Write on another piece of paper. I want to be a doctor or whatever they want you to write. Take it to school and give that useless teacher of yours. Then this one, keep it in your drawer and continue to believe in it and continue to ask God. When he went back to school, the teacher said, now you have some sense. Who in your family has ever been on TV? Number two, you can't speak. He too used to stutter. You can't speak. You are from this village. No, but who in your family has ever been to school? In your, in your color, how many people have you seen that are black, they used to call them color, that have ever been on TV? Come on. Be realistic. You can be a carpenter. You can be a plumber. You can be good with your hands. He said, thank you. He said, today, <laughs> you can't turn on the TV. He has 17 TV shows. He believed that he wants to be on TV. He asked God to be on TV. The journey was not easy. He was homeless for three years, living in his car. But he asked God. And he's not ashamed of God. Anywhere Steve Harvey talks, he will still say he's God. He said he's blessed by grace. He's washed in grace. Do you know what he started to do when he got his first TV show, the Steve Harvey show? He said every year for Christmas, he will send his teacher a flat screen TV. The teacher that said it will not be on TV. Every year until the woman died. He even knew when she died and they became friends. Every year that even if she has to be distributed because how many TV do you need? Say so every year 
they will buy a TV. When they had the big one, when they had the flat one, when they, they will be sending it to her. Just ask. Just ask God and then obey him. Finally, Matthew 21, 22, which we have said, it says, whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. So when we say, Psalm 34 verse 8 says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. If you trust in God, you will taste and you will see that he is good. Why don't you rise to your feet?